What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another match preview for you guys today. It's Chelsea versus Sevilla in the Champions League. UEFA Champions League football is returning to Stamford Bridge for another year and Chelsea are looking to start their campaign in a much better way than they did last season, losing 1-0 at home to another Spanish side as well. We're going to delve into our predictions for this match today, but before I start this video again, if you guys haven't done so already, smash that like button, press that bell notification button as well and hit that subscribe button to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content as well as helping me get towards 20k because we are still on this road to 20k it has slowed down a little bit over the last few weeks because of the international break and all the lack of news and content because of that so i just really need you guys help help a brother out if you guys haven't done so already please press that subscribe button and help me get a bit closer to 20k but without further ado let's go straight into this video Chelsea versus Sevilla in the Champions League. The Europa League winners start their Champions League campaign at Stamford Bridge for yet another season. But this time it's Chelsea welcoming the Europa League winners instead of starting the campaign as Europa League winners. And this is our first time competing in back-to-back -back UEFA Champions League competitions since 15-16. And for Chelsea, we are going to be looking to try and make some serious progression in the Champions League and try and regain our spot alongside the rest of Europe's elite because we have fallen off a little bit over the last few years. Since the 13-14 season, I think, we've struggled to make it out of the last 16, failing to make it out in every single campaign since then. And that's been a little bit overshadowed by the fact that we've been in and out of the Champions League. We've had a couple Europa League campaigns here and there. So it hasn't looked that obvious, but low-key we have been doing a little bit of an Arsenal and struggling to make it out of the last 16. And this is a pattern that we need to get rid of our system. And not going to lie, with the squad that we have on paper, this is our best chance of making it past the last 16 in years. But... There is a lot of other other surrounding circumstances that could hinder that, like our poor pressing, like our poor game management, our dropping mentality when we're in a winning position in games, our individual mistakes, Kepa in general, if he plays another Champions League game, that's going to be a factor as well. We have the squad to do it. Our attack is brilliant. Our midfield is brilliant. Our defence, once they fix up and we have, a, we have a starting back four, they are excellent. And hopefully when Edouard Mendy gets back into the starting lineup as well, we finally have a decent squad that can do some damage in the Champions League. But we need, to, we need to up our game management. We need to be better on the ball. We need to actually press as a team because one of our biggest issues, especially if you look at the Southampton game, is that our defence is playing their own game. Our mid field is playing their own game as well and so is our attack we don't look like a fluid team and it makes it easy for operation for opposition teams to break us down to isolate players to isolate certain areas of the pitch and to dominate certain areas of the field um, as well because we've just been poor and if we play in any way like we did against Southampton against Sevilla we're going to have the same start that we did last season where we lost 1-0 to another Spanish side at Stamford Bridge and we saw how badly that impacted the rest of our Champions League campaign Pain. Because of that, we finished in second place, which meant that we had to face Bayern Munich and we got slapped silly by Bayern Munich home and away. And this season, I don't think it will be the same way. Even if we face Bayern Munich right now, I think, okay, maybe we'd lose. But we wouldn't lose 4-1 or we wouldn't lose 3-0 un unless Kepa's in goal. Then maybe that would happen. But regardless, we have to look at this as a new season. We have to try and learn from the from the mistakes that we made last season, which right now has been a big thing that we've not been doing. And we need to try and kill games off when we have the chance because that's been a huge problem for us in the Lampard era. We get ourselves to a winning position and then we just get complacent or we take our foot off the gas or we have an individual mistake or Kepa has a blunder and we just mess it up. We can't be doing that again today. Now, Sevilla are not going to be pushovers in any sense of the word. Europa League winners last season and also six-time Europa League winners. They had wins over Wolves, Manchester United, Roma and Inter Milan on their route to the Europa League final. And they had already qualified for the UEFA Champions League regardless of the Europa League win. So this isn't a fluke Champions League show up as well. Sevilla know how to do it in Europe. More Europa League than Champions League, we need to be honest, six-time Europa League winners. And a lot of that was because they dropped to third place in the Champions League and then just bossed the Europa League competition when they went down into it. Hopefully, we see the same thing again today. 
in this season of the Champions League. But that's only speculation and that's only hoping. We can't try and underestimate Sevilla or say, okay, they're just going to bottle the group stage and go down to Europa League like they always do. Because that's not always the case. There was a few seasons ago where they actually progressed past the Champions League group stages and they made it all the way to the quarterfinals. Which, again, is further than we've gone since 2014. So we cannot hope to underestimate Sevilla. Regardless, though, they have lost a couple key players. Eva Banega's left Sevilla. Sergio Regulon's gone to Tottenham, as we already know. But for Sevilla, they've still handled the start of the season pretty well. They are in 10th place right now, but that's only because they've played two less games than the other teams that are ahead of them in the Liga right now. They have seven points out of their first four games with three wins and the draw to Barcelona. Their only two defeats coming in their last game against Granada when they went down to 10 men, as well as an extra time defeat to Bayern Munich in the UEFA Super Cup. But like we know from last season, no one's going to take the mick out of a loss to Bayern Munich. Sevilla, like Chelsea, have also struggled to keep a clean sheet in games this season. Both teams have only kept a clean sheet in one game this season. So expect this to be a game with plenty of goals. I don't expect to see either team keeping a clean sheet in this game and I expect to see plenty of goals going through on either side especially with Timo Werner back to his best firing two goals in against Southampton on Saturday but the same way with us we can't have the same problems come round and attack us the same way they've been doing throughout this season we need to keep our heads straight we need to not take our foot off the gas we need to not have any stupid individual mistakes we need to start our best team as well because I think another issue from the Southampton game was that we didn't start most of the players that started against Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace was our best performance by a country mile. We shouldn't be changing that. We should be keeping everything to the same. The only change I would have had from that Crystal Palace game was bringing Pulisic in to start the match and playing Timo Werner up front. Other than that, that should have been the exact same lineup. And I think a big problem was that we changed it up again. And that's been an issue with Frank Lampard recently. And that's something that he does need to change up. We need a solid back four. I expect that there will be rotations for this match. But when it comes to Manchester United, please, can we just stick to our best starting eleven? We can't keep rotating. We can't keep trying out players in other positions. I get we got players that are versatile, but that means they can move around as the game progresses. They shouldn't be starting in those positions because that is what is costing us. We're not playing players in their best positions and they're not providing the best performances for us because of that. We're not playing them in their optimum positions. So hopefully we see something better in this game. Moving on to the team news. Now, no journalist was smart enough to ask Frank Lampard about team news in the pre-match press conference. So we're going to have to speculate late on this one. Mendy, he may or may not be fit for this match, which means Kepa might have another run out. I'm really going to just start ripping my hair out at this point because we already know that there's going to be one mistake and I might as well just say we ain't keeping a clean sheet at this point if he starts. Maybe Willy Caballero starts if Lampard wants to rotate. I, I don't even really care because honestly, Willy's sus as well. And if any of you guys are going to tell me Willy Caballero is better than Kepa, you either really don't rate Kepa like that or you don't know ball because both of them are suspect both of them make errors i've said for the longest time if if willy caballero was any semi-decent goalkeeper he wouldn't be at chelsea or he'd be starting a lot more games than he has done already Thiago Silva should be back. He didn't play against Southampton on Saturday. I have no reason why he didn't start against Southampton. I already said that in my previous video as well. Because I don't care if he came back a day before the match. Five or six of the Brazil team that played over the weekend came back at the exact same time. And I'm not hearing the East 36 argument because I think it's just a baseless and easy argument to make. Hopefully Thiago Silva's back in the lineup now. Expect to see him to play 60, 70 minutes or something. Maybe get a little more rest in time for Manchester United as well. But other than that, I don't think there's any serious injuries in the squad. Billy Gilmore's still a month away from fitness, but no one expects him to be starting this game either. Hakim Ziyech may start, but he did look a little bit rusty against Southampton, so I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't start this game either and just comes off the bench. But I would like to see him come off the bench a little bit early with the mind to start him against Manchester United. For Sevilla, there should be changes from the match on Saturday against Granada with Lucas Ocampos and Luke de Jong looking to come back into the lineup for this game. Although the absence of Kunde means that we will likely see one of Karim Rekic or Sergi Gomez start alongside Diego Carlos. Now, we'll go straight into the lineup before I end this video. 
ignore the lineup I did in that prediction video a week or two again. It was absolute wank and I deserve to get butchered in the comments section. So, we're going to go and do this again. Hopefully this one isn't as bummy as the last one I put out. In goal, I don't know. It all depends on fitness. I don't know if Mendy's fit, if he's fit or he is in any decent shape to play. He starts in my opinion. If not... Just play Willy Caballero, I guess, or I don't know. Just bring Check out of retirement, man. I say this so many times. I'm not even joking with you lot. Just give him a contract and just say, jump in for this season because we need a sub goalkeeper. You'll be better than whatever we, whatever we have on the bench anyway. But yeah, I'd start Mendy if he's fit. If not, Willy Caballero or Petr Cech. Right back, I'd go for Reese James as Pulakwe to start the game on Saturday. So I think it'd be smart to bring Reese James into the squad for this match. Um, I'd go for Thiago Silva and Fikayo Tomori to start this match. Maybe go for Kurt Zuma because I, I think Frank Lampard might do the same thing he did with Andreas Christensen where he had that awful moment against Liverpool and he gave him the game against West Brom to rectify himself and he had a good performance in that match as well. So maybe Zuma starts alongside Thiago Silva or Fikayo Tomori. I don't think it'll be Andreas Christensen. I think he was probably the worst one out of the two if we're being realistic. Uh, ben Chilwell starts on the on the left hand side. I also want to say if Kurt Zuma plays, play him at right centre back, not left centre back, because left centre back is where all the issues are showing up for him. Ben Chilwell, we play him at left back, and again, I just don't want to see Emerson or Alonso start. I'll be real, that just really is what it is. Maybe give them a match against one of the lower teams in our group stage, but not against Sevilla. It'll just be suicidal. Uh, in midfield, the two DMs, I'm going to go for Jorginho and Kovacic. I think Kante will get a little bit of rest with the Manchester United game in mind. Plus, it will also be good to bring Mateo Kovacic back into the squad. We don't want to isolate him out too much. And he's a quality player as well. I don't want to play Kovacic and Kante together. Like I already said, they progress forward too many times and they leave that middle space open. Even though Jorginho and Kante do the same thing as well, I think that Jorginho and Kovacic link up. They're a lot more smarter and a lot more telepathic in their play. So I think one will sit more and the other will progress forward. They'll read each other a little bit better. As the attacking fullbacks, I'm going to go for Pulisic on the left-hand side and Callum Hudson-Odoi on the right. Because I don't even know why Callum Hudson-Odoi didn't start on Saturday or didn't get any sort of game time. And with Hakim Ziyech still not looking fully match fit, I think this is another game where Callum Hudson-Odoi deserves to show why he should be getting more game time for the club. The final two speak for themselves, Kai Havertz and Timo Werner. Kai Havertz, one mistake for the goal, which he's owned up to. He said, it's a mistake, I put my hands up. Other than that, it was a flawless performance from him. So I'm not saying too much about it. Learn from the mistakes and we move on. He starts. Timo Werner as well, perfect game for him to continue his run of form after that amazing performance against Southampton. Hoping for another couple goals for him as well. As a score prediction, probably go 3-2 Chelsea. Maybe 3-1 if Mendy starts, I don't know. Or maybe even 3-0, I don't know. But I think there's going to be goals on either side. I don't think either side's keeping a clean sheet, actually. I'm going to go for 3-1. But I'm just hoping for a Chelsea win. Guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know how confident you guys are for Sevilla versus Chelsea. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the Chelsea.